Ready? Morning everybody, thanks for being here on the uh, land of the Wurundjeri people in front of the mighty MCG as we stand here to announce our summer of cricket schedule. Seems pretty apt to be announcing a summer of cricket schedule and we'll give people hope that the coldest day on the eastern seaboard in living memory will, um, is not too far away from being summer and cricket coming around. It's an incredible uh, summer of cricket we've got ahead of us. We've got, uh, by, by our count, it's the most number of matches of international cricket that we'll have on Australian soil ever and that doesn't include the World T20, of course, which is coming in October, November um, for Aaron and his boys to defend the title. Also includes six international teams coming out to our shores, which is an incredible number of teams, um, highlighted, of course, by the, the test matches against West Indies and South Africa. The highlights for me uh, would probably start in getting back to Northern Australia, the men's team getting up to Northern Australia to play some matches in, in Cairns and Townsville in late August and September. Um, a great run into the World T20 uh, with matches against the West Indies and England, two really strong opponents. We've got some great, um, some really interesting stuff coming out the back of that Test cricket returning to Perth, cricket returning to Perth, which for us is magnificent. That great stadium over in Perth hosting cricket as it should be. Um, also the first two Tests of the summer, for us on the Eastern Seaboard being able to watch them in prime time, which is the first time we've, we've taken that opportunity, uh, which should be great for the fans, especially on this side of the country. Uh, also great to see South Africa back here for the first time to play Boxing Day and the New Year's Test match since 2008, 14 long years, so it'll be great to have them back. And then finally we get to our, we get to our women's team, the incomparable women's team at the moment, playing against Pakistan in, uh, in the summer holiday period of, of January. It's a great summer of cricket. We've got uh, two great people here to speak, as well as myself today, to talk about the, uh, the excitement of the summer we'll bring in Aaron Finch and Elise Perry. We're Happy to take some questions. Mike Sussy, you're actually about how'd you go managing the, um, the schedule and trying to fit all the jigsaw pieces together? Yeah, it's never easy. Um, you know, so there's distinct paths. There's the men's and the women's, and they're, and they're in different stages of their FTP. So the men's FTP is almost concluding. One more year to go, whereas the women's has just started. So with that comes different complications. For the men, we're trying to squeeze a lot of content in, whereas the women, we're starting and uh, having those ebbs and flows of home and away. Um, you know, for both we think this is an exciting year, but looking forward there's some exciting cricket as well. And what are your options around that South Africa series? Obviously it's subject to, to changes. Uh, there aren't too many places you can place that one day series in. It, is it likely to stay where it is or are you trying to find some options in, to give Australia a chance to get their playing players playing in BBL? Yeah, firstly the test matches aren't in, aren't in any question here. We're talking about the ODIs. So our strong intention is to play them as, as scheduled and we're working through that with South Africa. You rightly point out this is a really busy season of cricket and finding a spot will be difficult, but we're engaged in that discussion with South Africa and we hope to finalise that in the coming weeks. And the BBL, can you give us any, any hints on how that's progressing? It's progressing. We've got a little bit more time to get through that. So this is the first step in, in, in the summer outline. Um, we think we've got a window that we can work with and now we're just finalising those you know, the, the real, you know, the best matchups, the right nights, the right flow of games um, to bring it to its conclusion. Just wait for the bus to leave. Hey, that might be. Yeah, we think it'll be a similar, similar window, similar, um, yeah, similar length. Uh, what we do know is that period works really well for our audience. It's, it's a great time of year to be playing cricket in summer holidays. Across Australia, and it'll be great to get it'll be great to get it around the country again, like we and to engage with the fans as we haven't been able to do in the last couple of years. Yeah, what we do know is that there's lots of 2020 tournaments around the world um, competing for the interests of players, but yeah, we have been really strong, and our players have been really strong on putting in national cricket first, and we'd we'd see no reason why that wouldn't continue. Uh, certainly not the priority. Uh, we, we are supportive of women's test cricket, but we also understand that there, there's very few countries that are engaged in women's test cricket at the moment. Uh, we'd love that to increase, but we also don't want to be pushing uh, countries to play women's test cricket before they're ready. So again, we're looking at a, a, a new FTP and there'll be plenty of test cricket opportunities across those three years. But at this, unfortunately this year, um, the, uh, the opponents didn't match up to find that opportunity. Uh, 
Uh, a little bit of thinking around it. We, yeah, we've got a few different challenges with you know, our summer schedules going forward. Um, it's never been set in stone, it starts at the Gabba, so you know, the opportunity to play two prime time test matches to start the summer was one that we wanted to have a look at. Um, we also know the Gabba is going to be offline for a, a couple of years, so in those years it won't be at the Gabba. So seeing, you know, taking the chance to look at some different opportunities when we've got the chance to us makes a bit of sense. Um, also gives us the chance to, you know, we've got a very good record in Perth too, so it's moving away from Fortress Gabba, uh, you know, is not, um, is not something that scares us. So the record in Perth is equally strong at, uh, sorry, at the Gabba is equally strong at Perth. So for all those reasons, we're, you know, we're looking forward to the chance. We think there's a big upside with it being in prime time on the East Coast. Great. Vinci in now. Yeah, it's been good. The, it's been nice to have a couple of days off after getting back from India and, and I think some guys will be at different stages of that. Um, obviously Wadey's still over there uh, winning the IPL last night and, and guys sort of floating back over the last week or so. Um, but yeah, feeling really good, really really looking forward to Sri Lanka. How do you feel India went recently for you? Oh, not bad. Yeah, it's, it's always can be tough when you come in to a franchise after the first sort of five or six games and, and try and have an impact. Um, I was probably, yeah, I was inconsistent, but I mean, T20 cricket, you're looking to get after it in the in the power play, but um, probably tried to went the other way and tried to go a little bit too hard. Um, but that's that's T20. Is there anything you're, anything you're working on? It seemed like at the back end of the Pakistan series, your, your movement patterns were where you'd like them to be. Is there anything yep. you, you said? I think in memory you found something there that you, you want to implement in Sri Lanka. Can you give some insights on that? Yeah, I think my, my technique started to get a little bit too open. Um, when, when you're worried about the ball swinging back into your front pad, you, you can tend to open up, which then has a bit of a flow-on effect. So it's just trying to get back to a little bit more square and, and making sure that I'm, I'm giving myself every chance to, to get through them first five or six balls. And then in T20 or ODIs, you can sort of flows on from that. Uh, they, they're obviously your most vulnerable times, but um, yeah, just sort of squaring up my technique again. I was just a bit open and, and hips and shoulders and, and feet and everything and, and just lost the ability to transfer my weight back through the ball. Oh, not really. Just get some more runs. Um, I mean, it's been a reasonably lean patch. Uh, I've been through that plenty of times in my career. I've, I've, at times you go through stages where you get a heap of runs uh, in a hurry and then go through some lean patches. But I mean, that's a part of it. I mean, it's something to, to look forward to. It's with such a busy schedule of, of cricket, there's a lot of time to be able to build and um, I suppose get back into the groove of, of one day cricket, especially. We haven't played a huge amount of that over the over the last little while. So um, yeah, it'd be really nice to, to try and get some big runs and, and keep, uh, Keep everyone off my back for a little while. <laughs> Apart from Adam Sanford, that comes to your almost full strength for the T20s. So yep. Are you going to set up in a similar way? Is there any experimentation for this series, or are you just looking to kind of bed down combinations ahead of the World Cup? Oh, there'll be a bit of both. I think not knowing what we're going to get conditions wise for the T20s, I think um, Colombo and Candy are so different um, for the T20s and ODIs. Colombo and Candy are so different. Um, surfaces that I think we've got to be flexible and adaptable and um, making sure that when we get to the World Cup that we've got we've got plenty of options that we can go with whether we jig our side to have two spinners or, or go with the three quicks and use the all-rounders a bit more so we'll, we'll have to be flexible and, and I think that creates creates some uh, some great options for us. There's one guy making some um, waves, Tim David. Yep. Do you see, he's not in the squad at the moment, he's obviously yeah, I think so. There'll, there'll be some options there. Uh, he's been in fantastic form for a while now. He, he's the back end of the IPL was fantastic for him. He, it was at his brutal best. He, he, the ability to hit from ball one is is a pretty rare skill, and, and he's he's done that uh, plenty of times now. And, and for him to keep being so consistent, uh, that's that's something that uh, yeah we'll definitely look at over the next little while.
I think so, yeah. Uh, I mean, playing cricket for Australia is a, the, the priority and, um, yeah, I don't think that there'll be any issues there. No one wants to for anyone to miss out on, I guess, a bit of that for... I, I wouldn't have thought so, no, nah, no. Nah. Can I ask you about the men's coaching setup? We've had Dan Vittori and Andre yep. Borovic, you know, Andre really well. Can you give us any insights on, on those two appointments to join Andrew Pinot? Both really, really good coaches. Uh, Dan, obviously, with his playing experience and, and coaching experience around the world, um, just brings a, a real calmness to the to the group. He's someone who who batters and bowlers can lean on um, for his expertise as well. So he, he's, a, he's a super guy, um, very hard worker, along along with Andre, who um, as as hard a worker as as you'll meet. Um, very diligent, just comes with with a great attitude, and I think that's that's what the coaching staff have got now. There's 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 a great bunch there who who um, get around each other with with. Obviously, Diver and, and Andrew as well. So, yeah, it's it's, um, it's set up really well. Well, I think I think Pez is probably better to speak to that. That they they dominated in Australia and, and were so clinical in the T20 World Cup. But I think it's playing it at home is all, all always really special and. I mean, for it all to come to a head at the MCG, uh, there's going to be some blockbuster games here, but particularly the final. Um, it, it'll just be a great tournament and great to have a World, a world Cup back in Australia in, in the men's space. The, the, we saw how, how big the success of the women's one was. Um, it was 86,000 here at the G for the final. Um, it, was, it was pretty special. Oh, I hope not. I hope I can keep playing um, longer than that. We'll just have to wait and see. And Ali, what are your thoughts on the fixture ahead today? We've got six matches in January. What are your thoughts on the Yeah, again, a really exciting summer for the Australian women's team, but I think probably um, even more broadly, Australian women's cricket. Um, on the domestic front, the increase in WNCL games is absolutely tremendous, and I think something that is going to be pivotal for the game to continue to, to grow and, and keep um, you know building our depth in players and, and giving lots of girls opportunities. So that's wonderful. Um, the WBBL again is has been such a great vehicle for us and and such a, a wonderful competition and and probably the toughest comp in the world um, for women's T20 cricket. So it's lovely to host that. And then obviously with Pakistan coming out, um, you know, at, and the start of the, the Future Tours program again uh, this summer is, is really exciting. And just before that, you've got the Tom Games and you'll be uh, Sally Mitch. Can you want to talk to us about what she's like as a leader and how you practice that? Yeah, I've been fortunate to know Shell for a long time. Um, she was in, in the first team that I played for at Australia as, as one of our, our leading players back then. And, and I think, you know, she's really trans transferred her incredible ability as a player and, and wonderful teammate into, you know, the strengths that she has as a coach. Um, she's wonderful around the group, um, you know, not just with the, the spin bowlers and, and the batters, but across the whole group, she has a wonderful impact. Um, I think she's been with the team for a long period of time now and she knows the girls really well. She's also had some experience head coaching with, with the Scorchers um, over the last few summers. So, yeah, it's a great opportunity for her. Um, it's obviously really familiar for us too, which is nice with a bit of change going on in the group. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to playing on the shelf. How's the back coming along? Right? It's going well, thanks. Yeah, uh, it's sort of just a, a progressive one where um, I'll keep getting it scanned in the lead up to playing again. But um, so far it's been going really smoothly and, and touch with that continues. Still early bowling? Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I, that's very much the plan is to get back bowling. Uh, and to full fitness, it's sort of just when that happens over the summer is the biggest question mark at the moment, but um, that's very much the aim, yeah. Um, it's a very T20 heavy schedule um, Yeah, I think as we've spoken about, the, the depth um, coming through in, in the women's side of the game is tremendous and that's a wonderful thing for, for the whole squad, um, for the whole group. It presents challenges for everyone to make sure that they're continuing to evolve as a player. Um, that's very much the case for me, but um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to still be a part of that. Um, certainly like sort of working to make sure that, that I'm in that position and I think you know, looking at our schedule coming up in another T20 World Cup, next year in South Africa. Um, yeah, you, you always want to be in, involved in the big tournaments, so I think we're all looking at that. Rory, you mentioned the constraints of the FTP. Obviously, a little bit disappointing you only got six games at home for the summer. You've 
obviously cricket. Yeah, I think you know, looking globally at, I suppose not just Australian cricket but world cricket, um, that's an important consideration for us as the game continues to grow. So um, it's wonderful to have Pakistan coming out this this season. We've also got an away tour in December, um, so there is a lot of cricket in there. Um, and I think again, the the opportunity for there to be more domestic cricket this year and for for um, the internationally contracted players to be a part of that is is brilliant. Um, that that competition has a rich history in, in women's cricket. It's also a great ground to continue to develop lots of players. So to have that at full strength um, for hopefully close to twelve games will be will be wonderful. Um, and you know, I suppose as as summers evolve, um, I'm sure there'll be more games for the Australian women's team on home soil. But um, this time around, I think, you know, the way that it sort of fits and the opportunities that we've got for the game is great. Do you have a chance to chat to Molly? <laughs> yeah, we all have actually. And I think we'll, we'll catch up with him this afternoon too. But um, it's, yeah, brilliant for him. I, I don't think anyone could um, wish him anything but the utmost um, success and, and good luck over there. Um, he's been a, a wonderful part of our group for such a long period of, of time and achieved so much with us. And we've got to know him and his family so well. So I think everyone's really excited for this next chapter for him and, and definitely will stay in touch and, and keep progress on England. How do you guys as a group continue to sustain success? Yeah, it's certainly a challenge for, for any team. I think, firstly, just sort of um, this period of women's sport and the opportunities that are available is, is very much motivation enough for the group. Um, you know, a Com Games is, is the first time that, that women's cricket's been in, in that um, and a really great opportunity for us. Um, I think, you know, as I said, the depth that's coming through is putting a lot of pressure on, on some of the senior players to continue to um, you know, play good cricket and, and evolve and I think there's just been no better time to be involved and, and to be fortunate enough as a team to be at the front of the pack at the moment. Um, yeah, we want to keep put pushing the boat out and, and not get caught because um, it's certainly nice sort of having success and I think once you've tasted it, you don't want to go the other way. <laughs> and I guess any disappointment or reaction to the, the lack of tests, I guess, because obviously there's constraints around that, but would you like yeah. to say um, well, I think importantly, and what's starting to happen, and maybe it, it, it's sort of slow going, but certainly the uptake of, of um, countries wanting to be involved in Test match cricket is, is growing. Um, South Africa are playing England over in, in England this summer, um, which is a great step forward. Hopefully when they tour here, we've got that opportunity against them as well. Um, and I think the more momentum that particularly these sort of um, multi-format series are a, a building for test cricket and providing it with great context and making a really good um, part of those series is is important. Um, obviously Pakistan aren't there yet this 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 time around but um, I think you know the more that we continue to discuss it the more that we do it and not just Australia but but all the nations um, in the in the future tours program um, you know the more likely it is that we play more tests. I just wanted to just grab a couple nice. more. I think so. um, can I just get you to hold it yeah. in the other hand? Just yep. one, please, Olivia. Just so they're both in the middle. Thank you. Can I just get one of you kind of just chatting as well, please, as you work? Sure. Okay. You didn't strike me as a um, camper. Oh, really? No. Okay. Well, <laughs> to, uh...